Jesus, I crave to know you just to know you will satisfy my soul. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is episode number 161. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this episode. Um, this is actually going to be just a, a fairly quick one. Um, and really my hope is to just leave you with a thought, something to consider. This has actually been something that um, as I've come across uh, verses that people will will quote or will use or apply, um, it, this comes to mind frequently for me. Um, perhaps it's just a an obstacle that I need to overcome, but it's it's something that I want to just uh, throw out for you to consider, uh, to think on. So it's actually going to be coming out of uh, the book of Job, and oftentimes I'll see people uh, use scripture from Job and apply it to you know a teaching point that they are wanting to make or as they are. Uh, bringing to bringing to the forefront or making a point on on the Lord or how God operates or just various things people will use various verses out of the book of Job and and here's the question that I want to pose to you I find myself a little leery of using portions of Job because or drawing up conclusions based on certain verses in Job, I have hesitation or um, I want to, you know, carefully consider because if you recall the story of Job, he has friends that uh, come alongside of him during his time of great difficulty, and they provide him counsel, and they have much to say uh, regarding his situation, regarding the reality of God and how God operates. And if you'll remember, at the end of all of this dialogue, this back and forth that, that goes on, um, let's see, against you and your two friends. So there's, there's the three friends of, of Job. So if you remember, though, towards the end of the discourse uh, where they dialogue with one another back and forth, taking turns, pointing out this and that, um, the Lord strongly rebukes the friends and rebukes Job. Um, let me point out this particular verse uh, that I want to bring your attention to. So this is Job chapter 38, and starting in verse 1, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge. And then the Lord goes on to point out all the things that Job did not do or did not know and so on. Uh, that's out of the ESV. The NIV uh, uses this translation. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge. So the Lord God has an issue, takes issue with words that have been uttered that lack knowledge. Now, there's then towards the end in Job chapter Let's see, where is it? Chapter 41. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Job chapter 42, uh, starting in verse 7. 
And it says, After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. And then we can read on to find that God then instructs Job to offer a sacrifice to pray uh, for his friends so that that God will not deal with them according to their folly. So this is really the essence of the issue or question maybe that, that I am considering and asking you to consider. How wise is it for us to use um, particular excerpts of dialogue from these friends of Job and even even I would say Job himself, you know, God does have a very uh, st- um, stern correction of how Job is addressing and, and perceiving things. So how wise is it of us to take these verses and cling to them in such a way that it defines or creates a, a paradigm for us to view God or to conceive of God or to understand God? When God himself rebukes the words that come from the mouths of these men as words without knowledge or words full of folly, um, I can't help but think that we would do well to be cautious to take these words that are without knowledge or folly and to try to understand if what we're reading is the utterances of an incomplete understanding and, dare I say, even misguided understanding. Now, before you get too nervous, this this isn't this doesn't devalue or discredit uh, God's word. In fact, it I believe to me it it strengthens strengthens it because we see we're we're allowed to in this book of Job we're allowed to see the intimate dialogue between just regular people, and as regular people, I'm sure you know. Um, we are prone to misconceptions. And so um, it, it doesn't attempt to hide that. It reveals even the folly and the lack of understanding and lack of knowledge of just regular everyday people such as you and I. And so the Bible doesn't attempt to hide that. It's showcasing it. But we are... We see, though, God's uh, swift and patient uh, rebuke, and so we should we should take that and understand that these words that are being uttered are the words of uh, are the words of men who have an incomplete understanding of who God is and what His intention is, or what His plans are. And uh, it's just like any of us, they have a, a belief that they understand the ways of God and, and have it figured out. And, and so, anyways, this is all I really wanted to, to leave you with to consider is, should we be quick to draw certain conclusions from at the very least, um, Job's friends, um, we, we should be very hesitant to apply as doctrine or as apply as um, conclusions, feedback that they have provided. And 
honestly, I, I would say, Job as well, there are truths, obviously, that we can pull from the book as a whole, uh, Job as a book as a whole, but um, should we be more cautious and should we consider it um, more stringently before we uh, take something and run with it? So just for consideration, uh, thanks for taking the time on this episode. Uh, I hope that it was um, thought-provoking and um, prov- sheds a little insight. Um, so thank you for this one. We'll uh, see you next time. God bless. If it means that I'm close to you I would trade a million lifetimes For a moment here with you